Hello everyone, my name is Faye Shail. I am a PhD student at the Dundas Institute and today I'll be presenting our ongoing work titled Leveraging Cochlear Implants Based Special Cues for Location Guided Target Speaker Extraction in Dynamic Environment. Okay, that is a long title which I hope becomes clearer with this presentation. You're all probably familiar with the cocktail party effect. Selective attention mechanism, which is the ability of a listener to focus on a target speaker in a noisy environment, is impaired in individuals with hearing loss, even with the use of a hearing aid such as a cochlear implant. This difficulty doesn't just lie in hearing the target speaker or the target sound source, but also the ability to localize that talker in space. Looking at this video, we have two speakers denoted as the red and blue balls moving along a trajectory. Let's say the listener who is a CI user is able to isolate the red speaker as its target. It is still difficult for them to identify where in space the target is. Is the target currently at the left, at the right, or at the front, or at the back? And this is something typical hearing individuals do naturally. While current advancements in CI technologies, for example, beamforming, especially in bilateral implants, improves perception in noisy environments, it is still not optimal in the everyday uh, life. And also, beamforming even on bilateral users still doesn't help the listener to correctly identify where in space the target speaker is, at least not as much as we would like it to. This brings us to the use of artificial intelligence in all of this. A lot of research has been done towards speech enhancements, either in trying to separate all the sound source present in an audio scene, or trying to extract a single target source using a target information. While the field has produced impressive results, Majority of the work don't generalize to the real-world environment, and this is because the data used in training these models are simple, simply unrepresentative data. We know that perception is influenced by reverberation, which varies across environments. For example, sound acoustics in a concert hall differs from sound acoustics on the road or at the beach. Also, listener-specific properties, such as the shape of the ear, affects perception. And since most of these models are not trained on data that captures these properties, their performances don't hold up when we take them into the real world. Which brings us to the focus of our ongoing study. Using representative data, can we train deep learning models to extract the speech of a target speaker while retaining the special property of the speaker in a way that enables CI listeners to locate the talker in space. We start by generating realistic moving auditory scenes following the data pipeline described in the study as shown in the screen. Uh, the binaural responses were gotten from simulated rooms of different sizes and had reverberation time varying from 0 to 0 0.7 seconds. We also generated the moving trajectories for the speakers using a Markovian process as detailed in this paper. These properties are then convolved with the speech samples from LibreSpeech to get 24,000 training samples and 24,000 validation um, sample, which is samples not present in the training samples. We then split these 24,000 samples into 12, uh, 1,200 for the validation set and 1,200 also for the two, um, test set. Our duration was nine seconds, so we had two talker mixtures that went on for nine seconds. Uh, the signal to noise ratio ranges from minus 2.5 dB to 15 dB, and all our sounds were resampled to have a 16,000 hertz frequency, uh, sampling frequency. An adaptation of the popular TASNET architecture was used in this study. 
Uh, so a little bit of background before I present the model. Y represents the summation of speaker 1 and speaker 2, so X1 being speaker 1 and X2 being speaker 2. Uh, since each of the speakers were recorded with microphones on each ear, we end up with bilateral two-channel audios, meaning uh, sound X1 is composed of the left channel and the right channel. Also sound X2, so for speaker 2, we also have two-channel audios, meaning a left channel and a right channel audio so we feed each audio into the model where i'm sorry we feed each channel into the model where yl is composed of the left channel of speaker one and left channel of speaker two and yr is also composed of the right channel of speaker one and the right channel of speaker two so here is an overview of our model architecture we as explained in the previous channel we feed the individual channels, so the left channel and the right channel into the model. And we also calculate the um, spatial cues known as the intermicrophone phase difference and the interaural level difference from this um, mixture, which is what the microphone would originally capture in the environment. In addition to this, we use a target information so as to enable the model to learn the target speaker. So the goal of the training is for the model to learn and then extract the target speaker given this mixture. And for us to be able to retain the movie properties of the speakers, that is to help the CI listeners retain a sense of localization, the model needs to learn distinct properties of the left channel and the right channel. And based on this mask, then reconstruct what we now know as the sound from the left channel of the microphone and the sound from the right channel of the microphone. Okay, I see I'm running a bit out of time, but as I mentioned in the previous um, slide, the goals of using this angle feature is so that we are able to bias the model to focus on the target as opposed to focusing on the interference or other interfering sources. And to do this, we work under the assumption that we always know the starting location of the target speaker. Yes. Uh... Uh, for our training loss, we use the signal to noise ratio. So the objective is to minimize the signal to noise ratio in the estimated sound. So the closer the extracted sound is to the target sound, the original sound, the better the SNR. Okay, now for the results. So at the time of recording this video, we only have the preliminary results of the study and the model after being trained was evaluated on unseen data with unseen properties, on unseen reverberation properties and moving trajectories. And what we do notice is while the um, extraction is not exact because this is the mixed sound, so the mixed input given to the model. This is what we want to extract, the target sound, and this was what was actually estimated. We do see some residual effects, uh, so we can still hear some of the interference as we would see here and here in the extracted sound, but the model does learn to attenuate the interference speaker sometimes better than the others. So this is a mixed sound, this is the target, and this was what was estimated by the model. Overall, we did observe that the angle feature was not the best um, feature for discriminating between the target and the interference, because while the model learns to extract just one speaker, it struggles to always identify the target. So most of the times it is uh, estimated the interference sound as the target sound, which is not what we want. However, the model was able to retain the special properties. So if you can please scan this QR code to listen to the audio, you would observe that the model retains the localization um, properties of the extracted target speaker, which means that CI listeners can potentially still hear where in space their extracted speaker is. Uh, I'll be happy to discuss the ongoing work with people who are interested too, but thank you so much for coming and listening to the talk. Your feedbacks are most welcome. Thank you to the organizers for this opportunity. Yes, thank you.